Hi there. For those of you who read my blog, you'll be familiar with me and my exploits as I redesign my horse racing database. Um, what I want to do here is just a quick demonstration of the automated download procedure which will pull in the data files from Betfair and stick them into the corresponding places in my database. This video really is a companion to the blog post uh, racing database redesign part 13 uh, where there will be much more uh, detail with regards to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So this is really just a quick vi a video of the automation in action. A couple of things you'll be familiar with if you're following the process. Uh, these tables here are all part of the design that I've been talking about over the recent weeks. I did mention that there would be some uh, support tables, some temporary tables. Uh, two of those are here which will hold the data from the win markets and the data from the place markets respectively. Uh, those are temporary features in that the data will get downloaded, stuck in there prior to being manipulated and sent to these various tables here and then the end of the script the content of these two tables here just gets wiped again ready for the next day. <coughs> You'll see at the moment uh, all the tables are empty, apart from the venue table which actually contains information based on the contents of the spreadsheet file I flagged up to you two or three posts ago. But for the moment we don't have anything in there. Um, but that's about to change when we run the, the script. Now normally the script will run automatically, there will be no user input. But for demonstration purposes, what I've done here is I've opened up a terminal session on my server and I can type in this script here, just press return and you'll see that's it finished. It took a second or two. And if we go back into the event table, you'll see that we've got 36 races that were held yesterday, uh, along with all the information. So we've got um, course name, race, type and distance, field size. I don't have going information there because I don't have a source for that data as yet. Um, and then we've got information with regard to BSP and so on. I've got additional calculated fields. This is um, an attempt to make some sort of measure as how competitive a race is. And then we have the first eight runners and the minimum prices that were touched in running. So that's to allow me to quickly analyse strategies like lay the field. And then we have basic information regarding the place market, in particular the place terms and the market ID number. The event detail, so we now look at these races and into those races and the individual horses. So we've got the, the event ID and the horse ID which of course links back to the, the horse table which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, I don't have a source for the jockey ID and trainer ID yet so those columns are both null and then we have all the information that comes straight from the win and place market results files as downloaded by from uh, Betfair. Okay and there's the horse information and again we've got the horse ID and its name Everything else is empty at the moment. Again, I'm still looking for a decent source for that information so I can pull it in en masse to fill this table. The horse place prices and horse win prices, those are empty as I mentioned earlier. They get filled up as part of the download process and then the contents get wiped once the process is finished with. Okay, now the other thing that this can do um, is not only can it do it, the results for yesterday's races, you can actually specify a date range to download things en masse. So what I'm going to do first of all is actually wipe everything that's in here and I have a script for that called clear tables. So now we'll find that there's nothing there apart from venue, don't touch that one. Uh, the other thing is if we go back to these two folders here, the data files, they're stored in this folder so you can keep them if you wish or 
periodically you can go in and delete them if you don't use them anymore. Get rid of those and I'm just tidying things up really and here's the log which I'll show you for the moment. So this is for all the races from yesterday so you'll see here um, it gives a, a listing of the process that it went through so it downloaded the win market file uploaded all the data into MySQL, did the same for the place market and then it went in to analyse all the individual races and the individual runners for each race all the way through moving that data around into the corresponding tables and once it's finished that it gives a summary of information and then you'll see that that whole process took about one second which is great. So let's delete that file for now And if we go back to the terminal, I can do the same sort of thing. I'm already put it in somewhere. So <clears throat> I can specify a date, a beginning date and an end date to give me a date range. Now, as you saw from the, the previous example, you're looking at one or two seconds to do one day's worth of data. And uh, given that uh, the data files are available all the way back to the late uh, tail end of 2008, if you work that out, there's in the order of two and a half thousand days worth of data files there. Uh, now clearly, if it's going to take one to two seconds to do, to analyse one day's worth, you'd be looking at, if I try to download everything from the late uh, 2008, it's going to take about an hour and a half, 20 minutes, an hour and a half. So for the purposes of this exercise, just to demonstrate it, uh, I'll only do from the beginning of April this year to today. So if we press return for that, it'll obviously take a little longer, but what we should see is things actually happening. Um, so if I go to the horse wind market, you'll see that there's actually data in there, and that's currently being worked on. Um, there's nothing in the event detail of the horse market yet because it's still in the process of downloading the data files. Okay, so here's the, the the current status of the log file. So it's only just now getting into the the analysis for each of the individual races, and you'll see that that'll take a little while. And if we switch to the location for the data files, you'll see that they are coming in. That's the first of April there. We're currently up to, oh, we're finished, so that should be, yeah, we're finished here, we're back to the, the command prompt. So if I minimise that out of the way, we should find now that the win prices are in place price tables are both empty, so they've been wiped. So the last thing we need to do is look back at the log file. So there you see all the files being downloaded. Then it analyzes all the races, moves the data around, makes calculations, and then at the tail end of that, it produces a log, giving you a summary of what it's done, and you'll see to do a month and a little bit, it's taken 51 seconds. Okay. For more details, have a look at the blog post if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching. I should say before I say goodbye, we'll have a quick look at the, the actual data. So you'll see here we've got 6,700 horses listed. And a total number of events of just over a thousand that have taken place in a month. Okay, goodbye this time, honest.